What you're looking at is most of the hard drives I've used over the years as a professional videographer and editor from being freelance to just storing my YouTube videos and even just personal family stuff. This isn't even all the drives, there's more. I also have everything backed up to Google Drive. You should never have everything stored in just one place. But half the time, when I wanna find something, I have no clue where it is. It's just everywhere and it kind of stresses me out and half the time when my wife wants something or when I even want to look something back in my archive, I just have no clue where it is. But today, all of that is changing. First thing I gotta let you know, this video is sponsored by Ugreen. I know there's a ton of different options out there, but this is a new option from Ugreen, and I'm really excited to try it out. And I just wanna thank them for sending them over and well, giving me more years on my life so I don't have to deal with the stress that's uh, back here on the table. So there's a few different questions that I wanna answer in this video. One, First, how easy is this thing to set up? Two, what are some advantages and maybe disadvantages that I see with this thing? And three, is it a good option to buy? Even though this video is sponsored, I'm still going to be genuine and honest in my opinions, but I'm still going to highlight the features uh, that make this thing awesome. I'm also a beginner when it comes to setting up a NAS, so I have no clue what I'm doing. And so if you're a beginner, well, this might be a good video to watch because yeah, we're gonna learn together. Now, you green also so graciously sent four four terabyte Western digital drives. The only problem is I definitely have more data on all of those drives than 16 terabytes. So instead of using these four four terabyte drives right now, I'm actually going to use three, one second, three of these Seagate Iron Wolf drives that are eight terabytes. I'm probably gonna buy one more, so then I'll have a total of 32 terabytes, at least depending on how I format this NAS. But the game plan is to possibly get another one of these or a bigger one of these, and then use these four four terabyte drives. I'm gonna use all of these for like my family stuff, and then this is gonna become backup for all my YouTube and client stuff. But yeah, this looks really nice. I really like the like gunmetal color that they decided to go with. It looks really nice. It's got an SD card slot here, USB-C, a USB 2 slot, or a USB 3.2 slot. And then on the back, we've got HDMI, USB 3.2, two USB 2.0, two Ethernet ports, obviously power, and reset and it looks like one of them's a 10 gig and one of them's a 2.5 gig. Might as well just put this on too. You green. Oh and then as far as like putting these drives in you just go like that and boom there we go. And then these are the screws to actually put the drives in here. So so far the process has been super easy. We just plugged it in, connected it to my network and then I just logged into the app and it connected basically immediately. There was a few minor things that weren't really working. Like I figured I might as well update the firmware because there's probably another firmware. Now it's just doing some updating, but I need to tell you about some of the cool things about this particular NAS. So the exact model of this NAS is the Ugreen NAS Sync DXP4800+. Plus. It can store up to 96 terabytes of storage and even has two M.2 NVMe drive base. There's a 10 gig network port. There's a 12th gen five core Intel processor. It has eight gigs of RAM, which is expandable up to 64 gigs. It's got one all-inclusive app, which I'll talk about in a minute as I continue this process. There's even an AI smart assistant that we're gonna test out where you can search by text like for pictures or for videos based on what you input. So that'll be kind of nice, especially for like the family stuff. It also has professional security to make sure that all of my data is safe. You know, data is something that you need to keep safe in this day and age. So after doing some research on how I want to set up this NAS, I think I'm going to go with RAID 5 and I need actually at least three drives, I believe. So what I'm doing is I'm getting all the data off of this drive and putting it on another one so then I can slip this one in there and I also ordered another one off Amazon so then I have four eight terabyte drives. The big thing is I just want this stuff to be accessible 
somewhere all in one place. I'm just transferring this data right now. It's gonna take a couple hours, so I will be back in the morning. I kind of had an epiphany while I was sleeping. I realized that those M.2 slots can be used as normal storage as well. So here's my thought. I found a really good deal on some 18 terabyte drives. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna take those 18 terabyte drives, four of them, those will be my backup storage for whatever. And I'll either do that in RAID 5 or RAID 6. I'm not exactly sure what I wanna do yet. But then I'll take either two or just one M.2 drive. And then that will become the drive that I edit off of. And everything that I put on that M.2 drive will just back up straight to the drive. Then I don't have to have two NASs on my desk. I can just have this one four bay NAS and I maybe I can even add another M.2 drive as well later. That is, yeah, and I can double the storage there. I actually have an M.2 that's in this enclosure as well. So yeah, I'm kind of just already set up for that. While I wait for the 18 terabyte drives though, I'm still going to format this and just test out all the cool features on it. So now that we've got that third drive in there, we should be able to format this to be RAID 5. And I think that is what I'm also going to do once I get those other four drives is RAID 5. And yeah, let's test some speeds out and see, yeah, what kind of speeds we get. So something that's working out in my favor with this setup, I just realized is I actually have another NAS that's down here, but it's not mine. It's actually the YouTuber I work for. So it took me a minute to figure out how to enable the SMB service. It's just in control panel and you gotta enable it. And then I can connect to this NAS just through my finder window. I just realized though, that I have a 10 gig switch that is connected to my computer right now that is technically for this other NAS, but it's also working for this NAS as well. So I'm gonna do a little transfer test and see how fast it is for 10 gigs. It's gonna take only about a minute to transfer nine gigs. This is completely over my network. I'm not connected to the NAS right now other than my internet. And it's just kind of a really nice surprise that, you know, I can take advantage of the 10 gig switch for both of them. I thought I was gonna have to buy another one and have it be separate, but no, it's completely just taking advantage of it. I can see on my ethernet port that it's flashing two greens, which means I'm getting 10 gigs. This is working out to be a lot nicer than I was expecting. Now, when you're on RAID 5 though, you do get a bit slower speeds when you transfer off of the NAS, it's gonna take about double the time. So it takes two minutes to do about nine gigs. Yeah, I tested the SD card function as well. And it's kind of cumbersome because you have to use like the file manager and then copy and paste. It's usable, it does work, but I think the SMB method is probably the way to go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect to this thing using the app and we're gonna see how it is. And there we go, now I'm logged into the app and uh, I guess we'll Go look for a file. I've got a file here. I'm gonna just download it and test and see how long it takes to download this. Okay, downloading file to mobile phone. There we go. It took about five seconds to do about, that was about a 600 megabyte file. That's pretty good. This is huge actually because I'm on an Android and I edit off a of Mac so I can't use AirDrop. I was using Blip before but I would normally use Google Drive to transfer like photos or shorts or things that I would upload to my phone. Now though, I can just use this app, log directly in and just download it directly. Oh my, dude, that's game changing for me. Like, you know how annoying it is to use Google Drive for that? So I think this is kind of the last thing I really wanted to try was this whole like, AI search type thing. I uploaded some photos and this didn't show up a second ago but it actually says people and I can click on it and it's asking me who this is. And I could put, you know, Tanika, which is my wife. And then, yeah, any photos that it recognizes her face, it's gonna try and put all of those into one place. That's pretty sweet. It's time to summarize my findings with this bad boy. So question number one, how easy is it to set up? Honestly, I would say for somebody who's 
at least somewhat experienced with being around like servers or NASes, it's probably fairly easy. And if you're a beginner in that aspect, like you've never set one of these up before, it was very straightforward, honestly. If you're like a total beginner and you have no clue what you're doing in regards to storage or anything like that, it may be a tiny bit more difficult. Like if you're only gonna use this to store like family photos and videos, then maybe just a little bit harder, but it seems to walk you through the process. And also pretty much all the decisions that I made on how I set this up, it had like a little thing that said recommended. So even if you're a beginner and you're not super advanced and have no clue how NASA's work, I think it's also very easy for someone to set up. So advantages and disadvantages, really the only disadvantage I kind of saw was with that like AI recognition thing. You have to enable the personal folder and then you have to upload to that photos app that's within the NAS software. It seemed like to me that you couldn't just create it or just upload your photos and then it would automatically start doing that. Now you might be able to do that, I just need more time and experience to figure that out. I'm trying to think of any other disadvantages there were some kind of like minor bugs. Like I kind of had a hard time getting the Ugreen Cloud account to sync with my like NAS account. And I didn't really explore the cloud part. Honestly, I'm probably not gonna really use it that much, but this product is a Kickstarter and I don't think it ships till May. So I'm sure that those bugs will be kind of worked out. I am kind of getting early access to it. The final question, is it a good option compared to maybe other brands out there. Personally, after looking up other brands, just because I was kind of curious, I think this one looks the best. I mean, it doesn't really matter that much if it looks cool, but the other ones just looked kind of like plasticky and just not as like high end. This kind of like metal, solid, gunmetal look, I just, I just think it's cool. And with it sitting at my desk, it's just not really an eyesore. But I think the big thing is the price. I mentioned that this is a Kickstarter project. Check the link in the description and you can get 40% off 48 hours after the launch on Kickstarter. And if you're watching this after all of those discounts, I still think it's very reasonably priced looking at the competition. Go and have a look for yourself, but I'm just gonna end with this. Don't do what I did. These are all the hard drives. I collected all of them and stacked them so you could see all of the data that is backed up on these drives. This is just a pile of stress that has been building up over the years, and I can't wait for it to all just be in here. And not only just that, but instead of having to find the stuff, connect this stuff to my computer, I can just connect directly over the network and download anything I want or need. And so can my wife. No more hard drives everywhere, no more wondering where something is. I think on one video, I had five of these drives plugged in just because I was pulling so much like old footage to put into the video, but not anymore. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in picking one up or taking a look at the other options that they have. And uh, be sure to subscribe if you like this video because there's gonna be more content where this came from. And be sure to like the video too because it's free and it helps out the channel a lot. So I appreciate that. Until the next video though, happy filming.